So our scripture is coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. And it reads, but whenever a person turns in repentance and faith to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Verse 17 says, now the spirit, I'm sorry, now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, emancipation from bondage, and true freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. True freedom. Hallelujah. Verse 18 says, And we all, with unveiled face, continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory which comes from the Lord who is the spirit hallelujah so we go from glory to glory to glory to glory amen that we're able to see, that you open our ears, that we're able to hear. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray that you will give us a heart to be able to understand that we believe the Holy Spirit is saying to the church today. We pray, Father, that this word, that as it goes forth, that it will touch, that it will penetrate the heart of the hearer, that it will cause us to cry out, oh Lord, what must I do? become saved. What can I do to further this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? One thing certain, two things sure that we know that Jesus, the Christ of God, is coming again. And that he would redeem us unto himself. Father, make us a prepared people for a prepared Savior. And for that we give you praise and much thanksgiving. In all the church, say amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You see, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I have the extreme pleasure of being able to bring you the word of God this morning. And I never want to come before you of my own accord. That I always want Holy Spirit to be constant in my ear. Amen. That I can hear it like we talked about the week prior, the voice behind the curtain. Amen. That the Holy Spirit is constantly speaking into my spirit. That God will give word that will minister to your spirit. Today we will be talking about our seventh installation of our identity in Christ. And if you've been following this series, we've been talking about the various aspects of our being in Christ or our identity in Christ. And we've been looking at the eight benefits of our identity in Christ. And I want us to be able to, to go back to our base scripture that we've been using all this time for this particular series. And I know that you have your Bibles with you, your tablets or your phone or what have you, whatever mechanism that you have for the word today. And of course we provide the scriptures on the screen, but it's so vitally important that you have your own Bible, that you're used to using, used to looking at, used to looking up chapters and verses of the Word of God. Yeah. So let's turn back to uh, the book of Romans, which has been our base scripture, uh, Romans chapter 8. And it is here in chapter 8 where Paul, the apostle, is speaking to the believers there in Rome. And, and I love Paul about how his approach has been in promoting the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what I like about Paul is that Paul does not sugarcoat. No, he Paul was right off the cuff. You know, and his approach to this gospel 
is that it was this boldness that Paul had in the Lord. Isn't that good? Amen. And let's look at verse 14 and 15 in Romans chapter 8, verse 14 and 15. As a matter of fact, won't you read that with me? For all those who are led by the Spirit of God, you read it with me, are the children or sons of God. Verse 15. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves again to fear, or you did not receive a spirit of slavery leading to fear. Instead, you receive the Spirit who adopts you as God's children of adoption. With Through that Spirit, we call out Abba, or Aramaic for Father. And what I love about that is that it shows us our identity of who we are in Christ. And again, uh, the eight benefits that we've been talking about in our, our identity in Christ. If you remember, if you were here in our last teaching in this regard, we, we talked about uh, benefit number seven. And benefit number seven, and this is a slight review, is that we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. How many of us remember that from a couple of weeks ago? And remember, I talked about us being a common denominator. And what I meant by that, being a common denominator, is that, that in my life, that I'm the common factor. That everything that takes place in my life, whether it be good or bad, I'm in the center of it. And in order for me to understand who I am in God, I've got to recognize where I am. I cannot point fingers about what's going on in my life and who did this and who did that. But no, I'm the center. I'm the common denominator. I am that mathematical equation. Next thing we talked about, if you recall, that we talked about that the Holy Spirit, glory to God, that God's Holy Spirit is a down payment of our inheritance in Christ. You remember Elder Quran when, when Jesus was with his disciples and he says, you know, I, I've got to go. He says, my, my work is coming to a close. David and Atlas. My work is coming to a close. I've I, I raised the dead. I've I caused the blind to see. I've caused the deaf to hear. And I've raised those from the dead, but I've got to go. He said, but I will not leave you comfortless. I, I love that. I love that. Jesus, the Christ of God, says, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will give you another comfort. It's Hallelujah. Not that the Holy Spirit, he says, that he will send it, that he will send this comfort to us because he says, I will be with you always, even until the end of the age. <clears throat> Earlier this week, I was in, in prayer with the Lord and I, I began to feel this, the, the weight, if you will. The weight of the ministry, the, the weight of my marriage, the weight of my, my employment, the weight of, of my life, everything that's going on in my life. And again, I'm that common denominator. I'm that mathematical equation. I, and I just I begin to feel a little separated. I begin to feel almost like I was by myself. And how many of you know that when you're left to your own thoughts? Yeah. Well, right. Huh? When, when sometimes when, when you're left to your own thoughts and your mind starts to run it. And let me tell you, you better reel it in quick. Yeah. Because it would lead to depression. It would lead to oppression. It would lead to the thoughts that are not of God. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And you know, we've been fighting yeah. this spirit of depression. We've been fighting the spirit of oppression. And I'm here to tell you, child of God, if I know that if it can happen to me, I know that you're dealing with it. Yeah. Somebody in your family is dealing with it. But we remind the devil that he's a defeated foe. Yeah. Defeated. And one of the things that, that, that pulled me up out of that rut, because I didn't stay there long. I'm smart enough to know not to stay there long. I heard the Lord say, but I'm with you. Yeah, glory. He says, behold, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Hallelujah. Even in my bad decisions, even in my good decisions, he says, I'm still with you. Yes, hallelujah. God, but you know, I'm still with you. Yeah. I, I, but I am still with you, he said. I know all of us have made some mistakes in life. And, and many of us are still living but because of the results of those mistakes. That we still are suffering from those decisions that we made. But I'm here to tell you, child of God, that Jesus, the Christ of God, says, I am with you. I am with you always, even until the end of the age. He didn't say just to the end of your life. He says to the end of the age. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last thing we talked about uh, on our last meeting on this subject is that there are three things that we had inherited. 
that we had inherited salvation. How many of us remember that? And that how we had angels that are that are sent and that are assigned to us because we are heirs of salvation. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't have to wait till we get to heaven to be able to experience God's goodness. Hmm. The next thing we realize that we have this thing called eternal life. That's a benefit that we have. One of the things that we inherited, that we have inherited God. God is eternal. And if God is eternal, we have inherited what he has. Understand that your life does not end once it's done here on earth. That we have eternal life, life forever. And then the last thing we talked about is that we have inherited the throne. The throne of Christ that Jesus, the Christ of God, is going to share his authority, share his throne with you and I. That's how much he loves us because we are co-heirs of God by Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. So I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the second benefit. The second benefit of our inheritance or the second benefit of our identity in Christ is that we did not receive the spirit of slavery leading to fear. Hmm. Hmm. Notice that there is a progression. That once you become a slave, it leads to fear. Fear is born out of death. All fears are based on death. People have fear of flying, that they're going to die in a plane. People have fear of heights, that they're going to fall to their death. People have fear of bugs. I don't know, that maybe the bugs are going to eat them. I don't know. Then they have fear of snakes. That sa okay. I I'm still working on that. Okay. I, mm, I, mm, mm, me, mm. I, yeah. But why are we so fearful? When he has already given us salvation. Why are we so fearful when he's already given us eternal life? Why are we so fearful when we've already been given the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ? Child of God, understand that slavery, it is a spirit. And it is not of God, but of this world system. To crush you, to oppress you, to annihilate you, to rob you of your inheritance. Slavery has existed throughout history. Where conquered cities and people have become enslaved because they have been conquered by a higher authority, if you will. How many just remember that the children of Israel, God's chosen people, became enslaved to the Egyptians? You remember that? And then, well, why was that? The, the Israelites had been in, in Egypt for generations because of Jacob. Remember, it was during the time of the famine and Jacob took his family down to Egypt and Jacob became a prince and that he was able to save his entire generation because he was smart enough that the spirit of God was running through him. That Pharaoh said, look, there's no greater God than your God. Wow. That he made him Lord over all of his substance. But what had happened is that Jacob and Israel had become so numerous that Pharaoh was threatened by their presence. It was so many Israelites that the Egyptians became afraid. I'm going to leave that right there. Fearing that one day that the Israelites would turn against Egypt. It's an ongoing thought in the background. You hear that, right? So gradually, surreptitiously, Pharaoh forced Israel to become slaves, attempting to strip them of their identity. When God had promised Israel that a deliverer, that a deliverer would come and, and deliver them out of the hands of their oppressor. That God would cause them to exit out of Egypt. And that their exit would mean a great abundance for Israel. This was fulfilled in chapter 12. When the Israelites, when they left Egypt following that 10th plague, remember the 10th plague was the death of the firstborn. And the, the, the plague was so bad that the Egyptians were like, look, whatever you want, just take it. Look, they, the Bible says that he gave up what, the gold, the silver, the jewels, the gems, everything. The Bible says that they spoiled the Egyptians. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that, that they were instructed to ask of the Egyptians for items of value for their journey. They asked the Egyptians for everything and the Egyptians did not hold back what they had given them. God had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that whatever they asked for, they plundered 
They spoiled the Egyptians. That's, you can locate that in verse 35 and 36. But I'm here to tell you, child of God, that when God delivers, when God delivers, he delivers. He delivers health and wholeness in their flesh, in their money, in their possessions. And the scripture says there's not one feeble one among them. I don't care how old they were. The Bible says they weren't feeble. The Bible says that while they were in the wilderness, when they had, had left out of, out of Egypt, he said that their clothes didn't even wear out. Yes, yes. Whatever they had on, it would never wear out. That God, he began to do these supernatural things that were taking yeah. place in their lives. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. Their inheritance was before them. They had their riches, yeah. the spoils of Egypt. They were walking in their inheritance only to go into the world. Mm. The God of recompense, Jehovah Gamon, Jehovah El Gimuel. Somebody say reparations. reparations. Somebody say reparations. reparations. That, 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 that's, a different, that's a different message. Let me get back <laughs> over here. But I say reparations because Israel, they were able to receive of their captors. They spoiled them. They got everything from them that they left them. When they left when Egypt, uh, when Israel left out of Egypt, they had everything they would never need. Yep. They were paid back more than. Yes. Glory to God. That's good. Yeah. God has called us out of darkness into the light that's called marvelous, into an inheritance that's far greater than gold, far greater than the silver. He has given us our promised land, if you will, yeah. of eternal life with him in or by Christ Jesus. Not of fear or of a slave mindset, but of a son, yeah. of a victor, of a conqueror. Yeah. Our identity in Christ is everything. Yeah. When we think on slavery, especially having been an enslaved people for over 400 years, that that spirit didn't just vanish because a president signed a document saying that we were free. Right. Come on, come on. Slavery captures the mind and the will of people. Slavery is not just physical. It's a spiritual. It's mental. It's psychological. Well, if not a, a spirit of slavery, then what, Pastor? Dave? What, what, what are we talking about here? The opposite of slavery is freedom. Yes, hallelujah. I heard someone say, give us free. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. Our being adopted into the family of God is our freedom. Come on. Slaves don't have an inheritance. Slaves will risk their lives in order to be free. Yeah. When we understand that we are already free and that Christ died, then we can be free. Mm -hmm. Come on. There are stories of enslaved African Americans as late as 1963. At the Waterford Plantation in St. Charles Parish in Louisiana. Enslaved by a system called pinage, also called debt slavery or debt servitude. A system where an employer or a slave owner compels a worker to pay off a debt with work. Come on. The Emancipation uh, Declaration was, was made on January 1st, 1863. But just because the law said so, didn't make it so. Slavery is still alive, child of God. Don't be fooled. There are many types of slavery that's still in the world that's today. Right. There's right. economic slavery. Yeah. There's physical slavery. There, 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 there's sex trafficking. There's all types of slavery that's still in the world. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm a, just a tad passionate today. Because it's, it's, it's my desire that you be set free. Free in your mind. Free in your money. Free in your honey. Free in everything that pertains to you. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Emancipation from bondage. True freedom. In the Amplified Bible. Who he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Free from the spirit of fear. Free from slavery. Now sadly, as a preacher, sadly, as a pastor, sadly, as a believer, many of us are slaves to something. Mm -hmm. so we, we might want to call it a vice. 
sin, child of God, is addictive. Yeah. But we have to move from slaveship to sonship. Somebody say sonship. sonship. And let us not lose focus to our benefits as an heir of God. We talked about vices. You, you know, we, there, there are things that we're doing that we should not be doing. Come on. As believers, yeah. you know who you are. You know what's going on in your life. You know the challenges that you have. We should not be held captive. We should not be slaves to sin. Say this with me. I am not a slave. I am not a slave to anything, to anything or, anyone. or anyone. I am not a slave. I am not a slave to anything, to anything or, anyone. or anyone. Glory to God. Jesus. 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 In 2 Timothy chapter 1, I remember that God says that he's not given us a spirit of fear. Uh, yeah. Glory to God, but of power yeah. Yeah. and of love yeah. and of a sound of mind Hallelujah. that we're making the appropriate choices. When, when temptation comes, I'm reminded the Bible says there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that in which you are able. That my God always make an escape. Yeah. When sin comes. Yeah. Glory to God. Now if God didn't give this spirit of fear to you. Then who did? Who have you been talking to? Mm. Who have you been listening to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop it. Yes. Just stop it. Yeah. God's spirit doesn't make us slaves. Who are afraid of God. Instead we become his children. And we can cry out Abba Father. You remember the apostle Paul. He teaches for the first time to the believers at Rome. Here in chapter 8. Do you know that it's here in chapter 8. In the book of Romans. The first time where believers are called sons. It's the first time we're called the children of God. It's the first time that we're called in the holy scriptures. To be children of the most high God. Yeah. I love Paul's approach to that. In so much that we can share in the spiritual blessings. That belong to Christ. So we must need to do is to examine our relationship, examine our identity that we have in Christ, and we will find through this examination that it's power. If you want to do a word study, I challenge you. Look up in the word, every place in the Bible where it says in him. Yes. Call uh -huh. to God. Yeah. You're going to find yeah. out more than you ever want to know of who you are in Christ. Glory to God. Anyone who's in who is not in Christ is a slave to sin. If you are not in Christ, if you are not born again, if you're not born again of God's spirit, you are a slave to sin. The redeemed, that's you and I. The redeemed, we are not slaves, we're not servants, but we are called sons of God. Somebody say, I'm a son. I am a son. And don't, don't get twisted on the gender. Son here means both son and daughter. Amen. Isn't that good? Open your Bibles to Luke chapter 4. I would indulge you in Luke chapter 4. This, this scripture is powerful. It, it's a tad lengthy, but I want you to hear what the Spirit of God is saying behind the curtain. Yes. In Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 21, this is Jesus, who, as was his custom, the Bible says, that he would go to the temple. And when he would go to the temple, Jesus was not only a student, Glory to God. But here in verses 18, 18 through 21, watch him become the teacher. Verse 18 says, the Lord has put his spirit in me. Now this is Jesus who's reading from the book of Isaiah. He found himself in the book. Yeah. And he says, the Lord has put his spirit in me. The spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he appointed, anointed at Jesus' baptism. He was anointed by the Spirit as the Messiah. Yes. Meaning the anointed one. Meaning to, to tell, proclaim, to preach the good news. The gospel to the poor. He has sent me to tell the captives they are free. Yes. Hallelujah. Proclaim liberty, release for the captives, prisoners. And to tell the blind they can see again. God sent me to free those who have been treated unfairly. Has anyone ever been treated unfairly? Yeah. The oppressed. How many have, have ever been oppressed? Mm -hmm. 
and to announce or to proclaim the time or the year when the Lord will show his kindness or his favor in allusion to the release of slaves during the Jubilee year. The Jubilee year is when everything returned back to its original owner. There was no more debt. There was no more enslavement. That everything had to be turned back to, to its original owner. Yes. Verse 20. Jesus, he closed the book. <laughs> or he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant or the synagogue attendant and sat down. Jesus dropped in my glory to God. He says, everyone, he says, all the eyes in the synagogue was watching Jesus closely. Yeah, come on. Verse 21. He began to say to them, while you heard these words just now, come on. they were coming true today. Glory to God. Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. Child of God, I'm telling you that today. Glory to God. Today is always today. Just like now is always now. That today that this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing that you are free. That you're free from oppression. Free from bondage. Free from sin. Free. Hallelujah. This day. Is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing while you are present? Glory to God. And hearing Jesus. Hallelujah. We, we can imagine a slave with this yoke of bondage above their neck. You, you've seen pictures of, of yoke and of oxen that have this huge wooden stock on their neck. Or you can envision the stocks that was on a slave. It would limit his progression in life to weigh him down. And Christ has come to remove every burden and to destroy every yoke off of your life and mine. Yes. Hallelujah. Saved. But in your mind, you're still a slave. Prison doors are wide open. But your mind is still in prison. Guilt, shame, remorse, unforgiveness, not just of others, but of yourself. If we are operating from this mindset, child of God, we are not free. We are not walking out the will of God for our lives. Living in the agenda of the enemy who wants to destroy you by any means necessary. Well, if not a spirit of fear, then Pastor Dave, then what? The spirit of Christ who already made us free, his blood, listen, child of God, his blood is greater than our sin. Did you hear me? His blood is greater than our sin, that he conquered death, hell, and the grave just for you and for me, that we're no longer controlled by fear or death. Pastor Carol talked about it last week, about how, how fear cripples you, that it prevents you from being able to do anything it hinders you. It stops you. That's what fear does. But I'm again, I'm reminded that the blood of Jesus is greater than our sin. It is a gift from God. Our, our promise of eternal life is our gift from God because of our, it's a byproduct, if you will, of our identity in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm not going to point the finger at you, but I'm going to point a finger at myself. Transparency is the best answer. That personally, that Pastor Dave, yes. that Brother Dave, that Dave, if Dave sins, it's because I choose to. Yeah, come on. It is. Yeah. I'm no longer controlled by the evil one when I'm in Christ. I'm walking out my soul salvation. Come on. With the fear and the trembling, I'm, I'm working, hit your neighbor, look, hit your neighbor, say, I'm working it out, I'm working it out. That whatever my vice is, I'm working it out, I'm working it out. I'm no longer controlled control, I said, I'm working it out, I'm working it out, I'm working it out. Amen. Amen. This isn't a Flip Wilson moment that the devil made me do. No, the devil has no control over a believer. If you and I sin, it's because we choose to do so. Amen. That the temptation came and we took the bait. Yep. 
But I am so thankful unto God that God is not up in heaven with this huge hammer waiting to hammer me whenever I mess up. Come on. Mm. The scripture declares for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, if Jesus can live sin free, if he can live sin free, so can we. Yes. Amen. Why is that? Because as Jesus is, so are we in this world that we've been given power over sins. Again, if this guy, if I sin, I choose to not operate in the power that Jesus gave me. Turn to 1 John chapter 1. First John chapter 1, verse 1, verse 9. Okay. First John chapter 1, verse 9. Everyone read that with me. If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sin, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us how long? Continually. Conti how long? Continually. How long? Continually. Continually from all unrighteousness. Yeah. Our what? Wrongdoing. Everything not in conformity with his will and purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I love that. How the Amplified Bible puts that. It's called the aftershock. Uh -huh. The guilt. The shame that accompanies sin. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you, child of God, that thank God. That you have guilt. Yeah. Thank God you have shame. Yeah. Because that lets you know that you know that you did something wrong. And that you're not operating from a, 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 a mindset that you don't care. Right. That you're not operating from a reprobate mind. Right. Amen. Amen. That when you've done wrong, you, you feel, God, I know I was wrong. That's why the Bible says if we confess our sins. Yes. That he is faithful and just to forgive us from our sins. And to cleanse us. From all unrighteousness. If, if, if guilt comes, if shame comes, it's, it's letting us know that, you know what, I'm still connected. Yes. I don't have to remain in the state that I'm in. Yes. Guilt and shame, the blood, it cleanses up continuously. I'm reminded that somebody said the blood of Jesus. Yes. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. And it's and, and power in the blood. One thing I love about the blood of Jesus is that it coagulates. It stiffens. It hardens. It, it coats. It covers all of our sins. All of our wrongdoings. But let us not run from God. Run to God. Yes, amen. Your sin problem and my sin problem is no longer an issue. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Now, does this give us a license to sin? Absolutely not. Do not allow the enemy to trick you into thinking that we can sin and get away with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of us have had longer relationships with the world and her system than we've had with God. Let's say a person who's 40 years old, 50 years old comes to the Lord. They've got 40 or 50 years of living in the world system and now trying to figure out how to live God's way. They've had a longer relationship with the world and her way of doing things instead of God's way of doing things. But that's not where we're supposed to remain. Glory to God. Stop choosing to be a slave when God has already set you free. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning I'll say that again. No one born of God practice or makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him and he abides in her. And he cannot keep on sinning because we are born of God. Glory to God. Say that with me. I am, I am born of God. Born of God. We're not a slave to sin, nor are the effects of sin. My sin issue and your sin issue, your vice has already been resolved. That we have a right to our freedom. Last scripture, 1 John chapter 3. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 9, those 
for all who are God's children, born of, begotten by God, do not continue sinning or sinning. Because the new life from God, or God's message, or God's spirit, his seed, his sperm remains or abides in them. They are not able to go on sinning or sin because they have become children of God, are born of, begotten by God. Listen, child of God, we cannot be in Christ and be a slave to sin at the same time. As you stand to your feet, let that sink in. We cannot be in Christ and be a slave to sin at the same time. I'm here today to help keep you free because you're already made free. Glory to God. Let's go ahead and close this out with our confession of our faith. Say this with me. Because I'm led by the Spirit of God, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am possessed by God. I am possessed by God. And the fullness of the inheritance. And the fullness of the inheritance. Because of God. Because of God. I'll always have. I'll always have. What Christ has a right to. I have a right to. I am a child of God. It is in Him that I live. I move. And I have my being. My identity is in Christ Jesus. I have been baptized and adopted into the family of God by the Spirit of God. I cry. I'm a father. Whether you're in the sanctuary or whether you're watching online, would you say this simple prayer with us? If you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or if you need to rededicate your life back unto the Lord, if you need baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you're looking for a church home, well, we want to make sure that you're born again first. Will you say this with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I need to be saved. I believe that you sent the Lord Jesus to the earth to die for my sins. Past, present, and future. I want to live this life that Jesus died. That Jesus rose. I believe, God, that you raised Jesus from the dead on the third day. And he is seated with you in heavenly places. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for reconnecting me. Thank you for baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for my church home. And we believe that it is just that simple. That if you make that simple confession of faith, that you are born again of God's Spirit. And I want to tell you, child of God, that once we are in the hand of God, that no man can pluck you out of God's hand. We have received, we have received a set of instructions today on how we can live the life that God has called us to by understanding our identity in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Father, I pray for the people of God today that you watch over them and keep them. And I make this declaration, Father, that, that something good is going to happen in their lives today. I continue to declare, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers, as your, your, your thinker, your chooser, your feeling. And for that, we give you praise and much thanksgiving in all the church. Say amen. amen. And remember that the harvest is truly right. Amen. Praise God. Hello, this is Pastor Dave from Harvest Christian Ministries International. We are so excited that you decided to join us on our YouTube channel. We ask that you would give us a thumbs up, that you would share, that you would like, and that you would also subscribe. And remember, please hit that notification bell. That way you're notified every single time that we upload our videos. 
We ask that this ministry is being a blessing to you, that you will partner with us financially so that we can continue to promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We look forward to seeing you soon, and remember that the harvest is truly ripe.